Let us prepare for the word of the Lord as we sing and pray this chant together. Listen to the word that God has spoken. Listen to the word that is close at hand. Listen to the word that began creation. Listen even if you don't understand. Listen to the word that God has spoken. Listen to the word that is close at hand. Listen to the word that began creation. Listen even if you don't understand. The gospel reading 
for the day of resurrection is coming to us from the 28th chapter of the gospel according to Matthew verses 1 through 10 the resurrection of Jesus hear now God's word after the Sabbath as the first day of the week was dawning Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb and suddenly there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who is crucified. He is not here for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has been raised from the dead and is indeed going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Pardon me. Let my whistle after that one. <clears throat> Scott Jose of Calvin Theological Seminary helps us understand Matthew's account of the resurrection as he invites us to picture something like this. Suppose your daughter, who lives in Hiram, is going to have her first baby, your first grandchild. And finally, the day arrives when you get a call telling you that Jenny's on her way to the hospital, the local hospital, to have a baby. Oh, you wait and you pace and you bite your fingernails for about 10 seconds, then you grab the keys. You're going to be with her. Well, before you can leave the house for the nearby hospital, another call comes. It's your son-in-law. Mom, it's a boy, and we named him Jeremiah. Jeremy. He is gorgeous. He's perfect. We can't wait for you to see him and to celebrate. We are leaving right now for Orlando. So if you and Dad want to get in the car and drive down to Florida, there you can see Jeremy. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense, does it? Yeah. Well. I'll give you a quarter later. <laughs> but seriously, folks, that doesn't make any sense. You know, if you and the new grandson are both in the same town at the same moment, why in the world whisk that baby down to Florida? Why do you need to go all the way down there to see this little guy when he's already right here? That would upset me. But something very similar happens in this morning's gospel lesson. Jesus died and was buried and was resurrected right there in Jerusalem where the disciples are still staying after the Passover holiday. They have not yet gone home. But wonder of wonders on this first day of the week, the women followers of Jesus claim that Jesus has been Raised, They had heard it from the angel's lips first, but then bumped into the master himself on their way there. The disciples must have been shocked at the women's word and more than a little intrigued because surely the first thing they wanted to do is run over there and see Jesus. They knew right where the tomb was. But here's the catch. The women report, Jesus instructing them to head over to Galilee and that's where they're going to see him. 
That doesn't make any sense. Bring it up on Google Maps when you get home. Galilee, nearly 80 miles to the north as the crow flies, maybe 90 or 100 miles on the ground. And in those days, you just didn't grab your keys and jump in the car for a trip like that. These disciples were going to have to walk two to three days to experience Jesus raised from the dead. The Gospel according to Matthew tells us the, the most incredible event in creation's history has happened just down the street from where the disciples were, and yet they could not celebrate the resurrection until they walked two to three days. He was right there. But now to experience this amazing reunion with him after Jesus has been to hell and back, the disciples who were close to him in Jerusalem must first take this long walk. Why is that? Jesus, what are you doing way out there in the boondocks in Galilee? Don't you want to be here in Jerusalem and show yourself to Pilate? To the Roman soldiers? To the high court, the Sanhedrin council that condemned you? All those that mocked you and tortured you and spat on you? What a, what a chance right here in Jerusalem to get in their face! Whew. You wouldn't have to say a word, Jesus. Just standing there in front of them would make the point. The point, it would make the biggest splash that ever happened throughout Israel and Rome. And gosh, the whole world would know it so quickly if the word came from Jerusalem. It's in the center of our world. But true to form, Jesus didn't do it. He went back to Galilee for the resurrected Lord of Lords and King of Kings to be in Galilee. We see in Matthew, this ministry of Jesus began after his baptism and his temptation as he went to Galilee proclaiming the time is hand at hand and the kingdom of God is near. And now Matthew brings the gospel to a close in the same place and the way that it began. In an out of the way place, a very quiet, unassuming fashion. But how does this help those disciples and us disciples here and now experience and understand the resurrection. Well, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to the tomb to keep vigil over it. You know the story, the earthquake rocked the place as the angel rolled the stone away and sat on it. There's nothing to fear, says the angel. He's not here. He's not here. You see, I think the angel was anticipating the question that was on the women's heart. You know, the question that would logically come to them when they come to the tomb and it's empty. Well, where's Jesus? Where is Jesus? He's not here. That's the question we all ask in our lives from time to time, is it not? Where is Jesus? We ask it at the cemetery, at the hospital. We ask it when we get the news or watch the news in the face of the injustices of hunger, war, and poverty, and crime. Where is Jesus? And the response is, He's not here. He's gone ahead of you to Galilee. Now it's important for us to know that for these disciples, Galilee was home. They were Galileans. That's where they came from. That's where they were going home to. Now, the Gallup polls, I'll get back to that. The Gallup polls say that 87% of Americans believe in the resurrection of Jesus. 87%. But I'm here to tell you this morning, that's not the real question before us today. The more interesting survey would ask different questions. What difference does it make that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead? What 
difference does it make when you walk in the office or the classroom in the morning? What difference does it make to your work as a mother or father? What difference does the resurrection make when you are struggling to find hope, when you are lonely and discouraged, or when you are trying to figure out if your life matters at all? What difference does it make? The real question of Easter is, have you discovered the risen Christ in your own life? Is He changing everything or anything about your life? Sure, 87% of us believe the Savior is alive, but how many assume that He doesn't want to get involved? There's the question. Not just that He's alive, but is He involved? The angel said he's been raised from the dead and is indeed going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. If you're having any trouble believing that the Savior is involved in your life today, the Easter angel directs you to go home to experience the risen Jesus. Go back to Galilee. Go back to work. Go back to school. Go back to the ordinary places where life is lived. Go back to the routine. He's up ahead of you. You'll see Him in the morning when you get up for one more day. Jesus hasn't gone away. He has gone to your home. He has gone to the center of where you live your lives. He's gone to where your heart is. To where you dwell. To be with you alive and active and involved. He's gone ahead of you. See, Jesus is not only where you dwell, but He's also gone ahead of us. Jesus is always going ahead so that wherever life might take us, Jesus is already there awaiting us. When we graduate from school, look for that job, discover married life, have children, aging, dying, Lose that job. That marriage breaks up. The children aren't there. Jesus has gone ahead of you to be there when we get there. Wherever there is. Where is Jesus? He's gone ahead of us to Galilee, so why do we linger at the tomb? Martin Luther called it Deus Absconditus. In the Latin, the hidden God. That's what Martin Luther called this dilemma. We want to know where God is in our misery, so we start looking in all the wrong places. We look for God in power, in wealth, in success. But Deus Absconditus plays peekaboo with us. Hide and seek when we look for the world for comfort. This keeps us at the tomb because when we lose those sources of our human happiness, like our possessions or our health or our respect, we demand to know where God is. My God, where are you? You've forsaken me. But friends, God stays hidden until we are able to let go of it all and place our trust and love and power and the one who emptied the tomb when we place our trust in him he empties our tombs the tombs of our sadness and we begin to find the risen Lord revealed in Galilee the everyday places and the everyday people in acts of goodness and kindness and what I call God incidents all these coincidences we run into are God incidents and when we trust in Him, we can begin to see Him alive and involved in our lives. Where is Jesus, we ask, in the tombs of life? The angel tells us this morning that He's not here at the tomb. Look, this is where He lay. Look, this is where He was. He's not there now at the tomb. He's gone ahead of you to Galilee. No longer do we find death, the end of the story. The story continues to Galilee and beyond. We have a risen Lord and Savior who's waiting up ahead where He's involved in our lives and in our death and in our lives again. 
I recently read that in the year 387, this a long time ago, y'all, 387, an old preacher climbed into his pulpit in Antioch on Easter Sunday. It had been a hard year in Antioch. It had been another hard year in Antioch. Food was scarce. Taxes were numerous. Out of desperation, the people took to the streets and rioted through the city. Well, in response, Rome had drafted most of the men to fight in distant wars to the north. They want to fight? We let them fight for us, away from home. So that's where they went, under the Roman draft. While women and children remained in town to scavenge for food, people despaired, believing their lives would never improve. When they came to church that Sunday, they were looking for some empathy, but were surprised to hear their preacher, John Chrysostom, say the following, your, res your resignation assumes that God is dead. But do not be so certain. He who has embraced death has defeated its power over us. He, went, he who went down to hell liberated every city held captive by hell's despair. Christ is risen. Open the doors of your comfortable despair that the great storms of hope may blow life into us once again. And now over 1,600 years later, still so much of society is designed to help us be comfortable with our despair and remain at the tomb. But just because we think the story ends in a tomb, we find ways to be content to remain there at the tomb. But what if, it, what if the risen Savior is alive? What if he's waiting up ahead for you? So says the scriptures, the women left the tomb, understandably with fear, but also with great joy. What about you? Isn't it time for you to trust that Jesus is up ahead waiting for you? Do you trust it enough to leave the tomb and join him in Galilee? That's the question before us today. We have an opportunity to answer it. Several will. Several others may. All are invited. Let us make our joyful offerings to the Lord our God with our tithes and our gifts.
of our Lord Jesus Christ, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Hear also these words from Holy Scripture. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life, obeying the word of our Lord Jesus and confident of his promises. We baptize those whom God has called. In baptism, God claims us and seals us to show that we belong to God. God frees us from sin and death, uniting us with Jesus Christ in his death and resurrection. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, the body of Christ, and joined to Christ's ministry of love peace, and justice. Let us remember with joy our own baptism as we celebrate this sacrament. On behalf of the session, I present Jay Kerman to receive the sacrament of baptism and be welcomed into active membership of the church. And on behalf of the session, I present Kevin Wood for the reaffirmation of his faith and be received into the active membership of this church. Kevin Wood and Jake Herman are before us today. Having completed a period of instruction in the life and faith of the church, also known as confirmation, Garrett and Amber, as sponsors for Kevin and Jake, do you promise through prayer and example to support and encourage them to be faithful Christians? I do. Do we, as members of the Church of Jesus Christ, promise to guide and nurture these who are before us by word and deed, with love and prayer, encouraging them to know and follow Christ and to be faithful members of his church. We do. At this time, on behalf of the session, all are invited to come forward, either to come forward and stand with these who are about to reaffirm and profess their faith and receive the Holy Sacrament of Baptism, or the renewal of their baptism, or you may stand in place if that's your desire, and with them also profess or reaffirm your faith in Christ Jesus as our Lord and our Savior. And for those not baptized and who are professing their faith for the first time, the session is authorized that you be baptized at this service. As these questions are affirmed, any who do not now belong to this church who desire to become active members of the church are fulfilling all that is necessary to become members. So if, it's, if, it's, if that is your desire, you may inform one of the ministers or the elders and the session will receive you into the church. The whole congregation is also invited to reaffirm our faith and renew our baptisms at this time. So as you're able, you may either come forward or stand in place at this time. Through baptism, we enter the covenant God has established. And in that covenant, God gives us new life. We are guarded from evil and nurtured by the love of God and God's people. In embracing the covenant, we choose who will serve by turning from evil and turning to Jesus Christ. I ask you, therefore, to reject sin, to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, and to confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we baptize. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? I do. Y'all all join, okay? You got it? Okay. Just say I do or I will. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love? I do. Will you be Christ's faithful disciples, obeying in his word and showing his love? I will. Will you be faithful members of this congregation, 
Share in its worship and ministry through your prayers and gifts, your study and service, and so fulfill your calling to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. I will. With the whole church, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Okay. All right, Jake, come forward. Jake Herman, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want you to feel it, baby. <laughs> I'm going to anoint each of you. Kevin, defend, O oh Lord your child Kevin with your heavenly grace that he may continue yours forever and daily increase your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Colin defend O Lord your child Colin with your heavenly grace that he may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes to your everlasting kingdom. Kevin, defend, O Lord, your spirit, your servant, Kevin, and may your grace and peace cover him with his entire family. And thank you for his presence. Wendy, defend, O Lord, your servant, Wendy. And Lord, we just thank you for your grace and your peace that covers her and her family. And thank you for their willingness to be servants for you. Jake. Defend, O oh Lord, your servant Jake, with your heavenly grace that he may continue yours forever and daily increase your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes to your everlasting kingdom. Remember your baptism and be grateful. Remember your baptism <laughs> and be grateful. The Lord is good to us. Yes. Give thanks to the Lord. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we do give you thanks for all your gracious mercy. We thank you for the mercy of this moment and for the love that you have shown since before we were even conceived and we'll go beyond our death as we live life with you forever. Life with loved ones forever. A life of joy. Lord, may you place it upon these lives that have professed their faith, reaffirmed their faith, that they can go forth in joy and live that life right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.